Welcome to the Daily Update. We'll go over the action in the market for Wednesday, August 14th. Then we'll see how things look for Wednesday, August 15th. Had a slight up day, pretty muted response to CPI. There was a big response to PPI. It came out on Tuesday. And then CPI came in pretty much as expected. So there wasn't a real response to that. But we are now in the process of actually shifting over and looking positive. We're looking positive in the short term. We still have a ways to go in the intermediate term, but we continue to be positive in the long term. So please be aware that I do have a thing called the SPX Investing Program. It is up. It's going. It started in June. It's currently free. Uh, there are additional videos and additional information that I post there that I don't post publicly. I will be locking that down at some point. I was going to do it in August, but I may be delaying that a little bit. If you want to learn more about the program, there are links in the description below this video. There's also a link that will take you to the website. The daily video that you're watching right now, this is just the main foundation of what I do. The other videos that I do throughout the week, those are meant to supplement the overall analysis and commentary that I do on the daily video. Let's go back and talk about what happened. We did have a higher open, not much. There was a pretty muted response, as I said, to CPI because it came in as expected. And then right after the open, we saw prices decline down below the unchanged level. We went negative there briefly. We went down to the daily pivot at 54.16. That ended up setting the low. We rebounded and then we were able to climb above R1 at 54.55. Then we came all the way back down to the unchanged level. That acts as a support level on an up day. So we were able to bounce up off of that. We chopped higher after that into the close, and we ended up closing right about at R1. So we were up 0.38%, and this is still a concern. After the big decline that we saw a week ago Monday, We've been bouncing back up, but volume has been tapering off. Now, it is the summer months, and this is usually when we see volume really drift and look below average consistently. Folks are on vacation and all the other things that happen. But still, from a technical analysis perspective, we were above average volume, and then we had the decline and since we've been going back higher, volume has been below average, and that is a concern. We are getting back to positive now in the short term. We're improving and almost switching over positive in the intermediate term. We remain positive in the long term. And inflation and interest rates, the market seems to like what it's hearing right now without the economy necessarily falling apart. Since CPI came in as expected, PPI was weaker than expected. The other economic reports that have been coming out suggest that, okay, the economy is doing okay. So we're shifting away from that scenario that we're going to go into a recession automatically. Now that could always happen. It's just what the market thinks is going to happen. And we're, we're, we're coming back over and looking a little bit more positive now. But we want to keep an eye on all the different geopolitical events. So they can sometimes have an influence on the market itself. But so far, with all the craziness going on in the world, it's really not having an impact. Some comments. There was a very muted response to CPI. We're back above 5,400 again. We're getting more into the mid-range right there. And the VIX continues to drop. You know, everybody was talking about it. It went up over 60. Now we're falling back down under 20. And I'll show you charts of this. Another pretty significant indicator has gone from negative to positive, and that's the daily chart of the parabolic SAR. On a short-term basis, we're looking a little extreme, but again, this could suggest good momentum with the rate of change going back five periods and the Stoke RSI. So we're not really looking extreme positive right now our other short-term indicators are improving but not looking really really strong at this time but they are turning positive we don't have anything in the intermediate term yet that's extreme in the long term we're also keeping an eye on the rate of change going back 200 periods and i have charts of all these to show you and it looks like the scenario switching back to more of a rosy 
scenario. Now, this could go back to looking negative at any time. We just have to go with where things are at right now. And the 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 market is pretty much figuring that the Fed's going to cut rates in September. It's just how much are they going to cut? The dollar was up and interest rates were down. We closed at 3.82%. So that 10-year yield just keeps dropping where we had been at 3.85%. We're still inverted with the yield curves, but the 10 to the 2, it's getting close, but it's still inverted nonetheless. Sentiment, we're ticking up a little bit, but it's gone from being extreme negative where we use it as a contrary indicator. It's improving. It's now at 26 where it had been at 25. So we kind of go with that. If this continues to go up, that also turns things more positive. We're still negative with our trend, but it's a weakening trend. We've fallen below the moving average. The ADX is actually declining, but we're in a trending environment since we're above 20. The red line is still on top, but it's coming down and the green line is trying to come up. And again, I have a chart to show you of this as well. With the update that we saw, our bias is positive, and then the last two, three, four, five days together, we're switching back and looking more positive with the momentum. Economic reports. We get the weekly MBA Mortgage Applications Index on Wednesday. It came in up pretty strong, up 16.8%, where last week it was up 6.9%. Then the big one, CPI came out as expected, up 0.2%, where last time it was down 0.1%. And the one for inflation that the market really focuses on <clears throat> is core CPI up 0.2% as expected. Last time it was up 0.1%. So here is a chart of the weekly mortgage applications. Real thrust up here. It's the best reading that we've seen here on this particular chart. And interest rates are coming down. And it's the summer months. So folks are likely to go out and get more mortgages. Here is the CPI headline number where we just look at the rate of change going back over 12 months and it's starting to flatten out and the market likes that. Now we did come up on the month over month change where we had been negative and now we're back to positive, but the annual number is what the market is focusing on right now and they're fairly pleased with that, but it also came in as expected. Here's the core CPI, which we get our main inflation component from. Over the last 12 months, it has been declining, even though we did tick up on a month-over-month -month basis. So we look at this on a year-over-year -year basis here, the total and then the core. They are both declining when we look at this chart. And we're getting closer to that 2% level, which is what the Fed wants to do. When we look at services and you take out energy and then core commodities, we're seeing both decline. The blue line are services coming down, but still about 5% or so, and we're actually declining here with the core commodities as commodities have really been under pressure lately. Looking at some Isabel Net blog charts, this is a liquidity index, and I, I have to admit, I don't know how this is calculated. This Somebody puts together this chart, but as a general rule, when the red line is going up, that means there's more money available to go into the market, and that could give some support to the S&P 500. And this, again, you could take this a couple of different ways. This is something that Carson put out by saying, okay, you have a loss with an investment, whatever that investment is. What does it take to get that back? So if you have a 10% loss, you need to gain 11% back to replace what was lost. And then it just goes up and up and up. You can see if you have a 90% loss, you need a 900% return to gain back to the break-even point. And that's why in the program that I teach, I really, really focus on hedging. Yeah, we get into this whole thing to make money, but the first rule should be, okay, what can we do to avoid losing money? Because when we're more defensive and having to try to get back what was lost, that, that's a real hassle. And, and that can put a lot of stress on folks. Or if you hedge things, well, okay, now we're still at the break-even point once that hedge kicks in and takes over. And one thing that we're keeping an eye on here is these are cash levels, and it's actually going up a little bit. As the market was under pressure, folks are getting out of the market, getting more into cash. When we pay re really pay attention to this is when we drop down to 4%. That's when we use this as a contrary indicator. That just means that a lot of money is out there. 
and maybe there's no more buyers on the sidelines, according to this chart. And then we look at a global basis for PMIs, and it says the expansion is rebounded from 25% back in September of 2023 to 48% now. Even though it's coming down here, we're still a little bit below 50 when we look at this all together. But it has been improving overall when you take this on a global basis. And then I haven't been showing the equity put call charts for the last couple of days. That's the last bit of information that's updated. And I've been recording these videos earlier and I, I want to get the recording done. But here is another look at this. This is the five day put call ratio. Now I look at the equity put call ratio. This is a bigger picture look here where we just mark different points in time and what the readings were at that time. Typically, how we look at a chart like this is when it's going up, that tends to be more negative because there's more puts being called, being bought than calls. And when it's going down, that tends to be more positive. But we can use this somewhat like a, a sentiment gauge when we get to an extreme positive or negative reading. We look at the mega cap growth and tech positioning against the earnings growth. And here it says that they continue to be cut with the positions people are taking money out as the market was under pressure um, but it's now in line with the deceleration in earnings that we've been seeing so th this br is bringing things more back into line with each other according to Deutsche Bank on this particular chart and then global growth expectations are now at an eight-month low so you notice that a lot of the charts we're seeing they're a little bit delayed and this is bigger picture type of information because the market was starting to freak out about going into a recession and okay are, is that going to happen in the u.s is that going to happen globally and so a lot of the charts that they're posting right now have to deal with that particular topic but now it looks like we're switching back and looking more positive at least with the scenario now things could always fall apart going forward we like I always say, we can only go with what we're seeing right now. We, I, I really try to uh, avoid forecasting and getting really dogmatic about, oh, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. I, people love to do that, and people like to listen to people that do that. I like to just look at the evidence and then say, okay, this is where we're at right now, and then tomorrow we'll step back and reevaluate things again. And then this is looking at the 12 months out, the recession probability, the forecast. It's come down where a lot of folks back in 2023 just really thought we were going to go into a recession. But it's come down and we're right around the 30 level, according to Bloomberg here. And earnings sentiment, and this is, are earnings looking better? Are people feeling better about earnings or are they feeling worse? This also takes more of a global look. The dark blue line is the S&P 500 and they continue to go up and that's the strongest part. Then we have the stock 600, which is Europe. That's the light blue line, which are showing some improvement. Topics, which is Japan, and that's the gray line here, which is also looking better. What's going down a little bit right now are the emerging markets. They're not as strong as more of the developed countries that we also have on this chart. I haven't received the Yardeni update for today, so I'll look through that and address that if there's something that I may feel is helpful to you. And I didn't really find anything interesting on Twitter. It, it was a pretty subdued day. We've been looking forward to the CPI coming out, and then it was kind of a non-event, a nothing burger, I guess. Okay, so here is the intraday chart. And I like to include as much intraday data to give a little bit more perspective here. This was the big downward move that we saw on August 5th, on Monday, and then how we've been clawing our way back. Now, we had that really big down day on Wednesday, and it looked like, okay, maybe we're going to resume going down from there. But ever since then, we have been able to just chop our way higher, and that's really improving the overall picture. We did get a little above R1 intraday, and then we ended up closing right at R1. Here's our intraday chart, and the futures are rather muted as well right now in the initial overnight session. This is still a little bit of a concern. We'd like to see the blue line above the red line. Now they're both showing some improvement, but 
we if the blue line is above the red line, that means that growth is outperforming value on an intraday basis. And we actually underperformed a little bit here with our S&P growth to value ratio. Since the big decline that we saw on August 5th, we have been clawing our way back intraday with growth to value for the S&P. We want to see this continue to go up to show more improvement. And so we were up with growth, but about half as much as we were with value. We were down when we look at mid cap growth and also down with small cap growth and more than value was. So not really seeing much of an improvement here. We would like to see these ratios really start to go up. When we look at small cap growth to value, mid cap growth to value actually declined. It's not showing an awful lot of improvement. We have been showing a little more improvement here with S&P growth to value, but we want to see this continue to go up. And not really much of a change here. We actually drop back a little bit when we look at this growth ETF versus the value ETF. The encouraging thing is we actually fell a little bit below the 250-day moving average. It looked like, okay, we're just getting ready to look pretty bad here. Well, since the scenario is changing back and looking a little more positive, we are seeing an improvement and we're coming up into the rainbow with this ratio. But discretionary is not really helping things out. Longer term, it's still in an uptrend. The blue line's above the red line, but... We're below both lines right now as discretionary is just not doing all that well these days. We are seeing an improvement here with large cap growth. We look at the ETF. We're just a little bit under the 50-day moving average. Now, the S&P was able to close just a little above the 50-day moving average. You could still consider that as overhead resistance. We want to get far away from that on the S&P, but we're still underneath it here when we look at large cap growth. And we're coming back up as the large caps have been outperforming the small caps. And that's what helps, especially the S&P and the NASDAQ 100 to go higher. Our trend, we are weakening. We're dropping below the moving average. We still default to negative with this chart because the red line is on top, even though it's declining. But the green line is coming up. We won't switch over to positive until the green line crosses above the red line. And here's our short-term chart, also showing a weakening trend. The red line is still on top, but the red and the green line are a little bit closer together. And we continue to drop below average with volume, which is a concern. To see the market going up the way it has been and volume tapering off, that's a classic technical analysis negative divergence. Keeping an eye on sentiment, the ulcer index is still pretty high, but it's been chopping sideways the last day or so. We're really coming down with the VIX. We got well above 60 here, and now we're coming and dropping back down into the lower range that we're used to being in for most of 2024. And with the market going up, we're also seeing the VIX of the VIX continue to decline as volatility has been really stepping back lately. And we're actually turning down now with the momentum of the VIX. The MACD has crossed over negative. And historically, maybe we're in this little period of time where we see a little bit of respite here as the VIX really started to shoot up. And now we are potentially pulling back. You could say it's lining up with what seasonally has happened. One, If we do continue to follow this, the one thing to be aware of is look at how the VIX goes up. And that means stocks are going down when we get further into August, September, and then into October. And keeping an eye on the volatility of the ratio between stocks and bonds, we're, we're really dropping off here. When we do the VIX to move ratio, we're declining with this fear gauge. We also continue to decline with this other fear gauge. So we're seeing confirmation there. We didn't really improve much here with our risk on to risk off ratio. After really dropping down when we saw the declines, we have been showing some improvement. We want to continue to see this go up. That would help the NASDAQ 100 and S&P 500 to advance. And we also want to keep an eye on the spread between risky and not as risky bonds here. And this shows it a little bit better. And we're and the problem that I get is some of this data is delayed. So we're not able to follow this in a real time environment. There's There's a little bit of a delay here. But we want this to continue to go up. If this goes up, that means volume, or excuse me, fear is decreasing on the spread between risky and not as risky bonds. And we were in this almost complacent area for quite a while. And then 
fear really started to increase. Remember, this is an inverted chart. We want this to go back up to have things continue to look more positive. And the volatility risk premium is also very, very low right now. Our advanced decline line looking pretty good. We're not quite breaking out yet based on price. We're showing an improvement, but still this more a little bit longer term negative divergence between price and volume. But still, things are starting to improve. Overall, we're looking good because we're above the moving average, both based on price and volume. And we are seeing an, a bit of an expansion of the new highs and really no expansion of the new lows, even though our five day and 10 day moving averages continue to decline. The advanced decline ratio above zero in advancing, both with the 19 and 39 day. And I switch this chart around because this is also the advanced decline ratio. We show this based on price and that's looking positive. But then we have an additional calculation here based on volume that had been negative and now it's starting to cross back above the midpoint here. So that's turning positive. Accumulation distribution, we're starting to come back above the moving average. So one of our smart money indicators is showing an improvement. We're above the midpoint with the boom indicator and we're starting to slowly turn back up here. We're also continuing to go back up and show an improvement with the chicken and money flow after getting a really extreme negative reading. But this is also looking a little more positive. And the chicken and oscillator continues to be positive. It's above the midpoint and going up. So it's actually flat out positive where the other two charts are just showing an improvement. And we're crossing positive here with the vortex. The green line is now crossing above the red line. And that's part of why we're turning more positive. And this is also another primary indicator. When we look at the cumulative S&P 500 advanced decline line based on price, we're showing an improvement here. We're also improving based on volume, but we did see more of a downturn based on volume here. And we're not breaking out yet based on price above this previous high. And the NYSE cumulative advanced decline line based on price also showing an improvement here where the Regular advanced decline line for the NYSE is actually held up quite a bit better above the moving average. This is another slightly calculated in a different way NYSE advanced decline line, but this has also been holding up pretty well. And when we look at the NYSE common stock based on price, which is now going back up and also based on volume. And we look at a chart of the NYSE advanced decline line and then the S&P. When the red line's above the S&P, that just means the broader market is holding up fairly well, even though these are on different scales. The advanced decline line studies, we're looking pr pretty good here. It's holding up fairly well with the NYC common stock above the moving average. Going up a little bit with the S&P, the mid caps were declined just a little bit, but still above the moving average. We also declined with the small caps, but they also continue to be above the moving average. Our short-term chart, we're coming up now, and we close just a teeny tiny little bit above the 50-day moving average. We want to see if that can continue, or even though we're a little bit above it now, is this going to still come in and possibly act as resistance? On the bottom, this is the concern that we're dropping off with volume as we've been going back up. The rate of change going back five periods is getting pretty extreme right now. And you can see other times when we had extreme readings like this, it didn't necessarily mean we were going to reverse. It just meant that maybe we're going to go sideways for a little while and then we're able to resume that later on. We're seeing kind of a similar reading right now. And we are looking a little better with our 20, 50. Actually, we declined with the 50 and declined with the 200. But the 20 period is actually still going up here. And the condition of the, the short-term trend, the 20-period moving average, that's what I use as a short-term trend. We're continuing to go up here. The blue line and the green line are starting to turn up. It would become even more positive if we can see the green line come back and cross above the blue line. That, would, that means it's going faster. And then here is the 20-period the simple and exponential moving averages. We're above both of them. So if you just looked at this in isolation, you could say, yeah, the short-term trend is now positive. And it is really showing some improvement. It's the intermediate-term trend that we're waiting to see even to see things turn even more positive. And we are extreme positive with the Stoke RSI. We're going up above the midpoint with the Williams percent R. So this is short-term positive. Also above the midpoint with the CCI 14, as well as the 20. So this is also short-term, showing that we're turning positive that way. 
We're not extreme with the stochastics in the short, intermediate, or long term, but all of these are going up and looking more positive. We're above zero with the force index for the second day now, and we're above the midpoint for the second day as well with our standard deviations chart. We're in the to the plus one standard deviations channel. Now, looking at the intermediate term, we're crossing above the midpoint and going up with the balance of power. That's positive. We're coming back up to the blue line, which is the double exponential moving average here. If we can clear that and see these lines continue to turn up, that will help the intermediate term trend turn positive. And we're right at the 50-day move, simple moving average. We were able to get above the exponential. That's the blue one. Now, can we break out above the 50-day simple moving average here? That would really help things. And we're starting to go up and look more positive here when we look at the distance from the 100 period moving averages. Here's all of the moving averages where we're coming right up to the 50 or above the shorter term moving averages. We want this to continue to go up, see the shorter term moving averages turn back up and actually be able to cross back. That would show more of a solid uptrend. And we're coming up to this anchored moving average going back to the low that we saw in, I believe that was May, we were able to get back above this April low anchored moving average here and get above that. Can we continue to go above this shorter term low anchored moving average? And we're continuing to show some improvement here with the go, no go system. We're above the midpoint with the highest high, lowest low value. And we're, it would be even more positive if we could get above this and actually get back up to the blue line. The TTM squeeze is no longer extreme negative, showing an improvement, although it's still red, but it's the lighter shade of red. And we're coming down a little bit as things have slowed down slightly with standard deviation. This doesn't measure direction, it just measures speed. And we're still negative, but really improving with the ease of movement indicator here. We're flat with the Arun indicator, looking positive with the S&P McClellan oscillator. For the second day now, for the S&P, we've been above zero. So we're starting to turn back up based on price with the summation index, and we're also turning up based on volume. So we're seeing some confirmation here. We're also looking more positive with the NYSE McClellan oscillator. We're above zero, so we're starting to turn back up based on price and volume with the summation indexes. And the Swinland Trading Oscillator, above zero based on price and volume, that is now positive. And we're not positive yet, but we're showing some good improvement in the short and intermediate term with our oscillators, trying to turn back up with the PMO, we're trying to turn up based on price and volume, but have not crossed positive yet. So we're seeing an improvement here with the PMOs that are rising. The buy signals are starting to go up, and we're ever so slightly starting to go up with the PMOs above zero. And this is a big one, the parabolic SAR. This is the daily chart. You see the dot is down here. We've now switched back to positive. And we are still positive with the Elder's Impulse System for the S&P. We're actually looking more positive here with the slope oscillator. After getting an extreme negative reading, we've crossed back above the moving average and we're continuing to advance. Also, we're crossing back above the moving average with the MACD. This is more short to intermediate term. So we look at all of our oscillators in the short term, we're turning back positive. We're looking better here in the intermediate term where we're still declining in the long term. It takes longer for these to actually start moving. The Sean trend meter is still looking better, but it's more neutral right now. And the bullish percent index is above 50 and advancing. That's positive, and this is another primary indicator. We're also crossing back above the midpoint with the NYSE bullish percent index. And we're improving and turning positive here with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. We're back above 50 with the money flow, so that's positive. We're back above 50 with the ultimate oscillator. That's also positive. We're still above the moving average with on balance volume. And we're crossing back above the 50 level here with those stocks in the S&P above their 20-day moving average. So we're looking at the study again, seeing if we can get some thrust out of this to see if we really continue to go up here, if that's going to help the short-term trend even more. And we're positive with those stocks above their 50-day moving average and actually declined a little bit with those stocks above their 100-day moving average, but still above 50 and also still above 50 and declining with those stocks above their 200-day moving average. The copy curve is now crossing over positive after giving us a pretty extreme negative reading. 
we're still waiting to see if the mass index is going to trigger something. It hasn't completed its third part. It has two signals, but not the third one yet. And we're crossing further above 50 here with the RSI 14 as well as the RSI 9. This is still negative, but this is longer term. can take a while for this to improve. This is the 10-day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows. We continue to drop for right now. And then looking at some support and resistance levels, we're coming up right to the high end here of this mini rainbow. And this can act as overhead resistance. So we, we want to be able to break through all of these lines, close above it, and then see these lines eventually turn and start to go back up to be more positive. And here's the Ichimoku cloud. This is actually still negative. We still see the blue line below the red line. When we were really going up, we see the blue line above the red line. Now the green line continues to go up and that's positive. And we're still inside the cloud, but we're at the higher end of the cloud for right now. And then looking at the SPY, we're getting back further above this 38.2% FIB extension level. So that's showing an improvement there. And we're still possibly hitting some resistance here with the R2 level. We came down, we hit the support at the 5110, 5111 level. Right now we're at the 5145 level. Are we going to be able to break above that? That would really turn this longer term weekly chart more positive. And we're looking more positive here with our trends. The Heiken Ashi is positive. The rank, or excuse me, the Kegi is now positive with the black bar pointing up. The Renko has a new open box here. That's turning positive, and we're turning back up with the three-line break. So we're seeing some confirmation there. We also went up just enough to put in another X here on the point and figure chart after working off of the signal, the low pole reversal. And we've been seeing some new Xs drawn in here. So that's looking better as well. Long term, we're seeing not really much of an improvement here with the 150, and we're just a little bit below being extreme with the 200. And the rate of change going back 200 periods, we are above this blue line. And so we just want to be aware of that. That's longer term and looking a bit extreme right now. And we're positive across the board with the S&P, according to the Keller market model, where we're still negative with the mid caps and the small caps. And we're negative in the intermediate term with the NASDAQ 100. And we're still negative across the board with commodities and the dollar. And we saw a lot of blue or green here. We did the NASDAQ pulled back there a little bit. But everything else, just the NASDAQ keeps crossing different levels. We did have the energy sector, which had a BPI cross back above 30. That was looking more weak. This is actually turning it a little bit more positive. And then right after the open, we had the MACD crossover. And that's the chart that I showed a little while ago of our MACD indicator. So we saw more sectors up than down with the financials leading things higher and then energy and tech. The areas that saw some weakness were communication and discretionary. These are the areas we are more growth oriented. We want to see them doing better. And we saw just a little bit of a downward move with utilities. We're turning back more positive here with the new highs, new lows on the NYSE. We're getting a raw score back above zero. And we're still seeing the red line, which is the equal weight S&P above the S&P 500 weighted index. So the rest of the S&P is still holding up for right now. And we're going back up a little bit here, meaning that the bigger stocks are outperforming the rest of the S&P right now. And that's what helps the indexes to go higher. The Dow is still above its 50-day moving average here and looking a little better. We're still positive with the Elder's Impulse system for the Diamonds. We're still underneath the 50-day moving average for the NASDAQ and also for the NASDAQ 100. And we continue to be positive with the Elder's Impulse system for the Qs and the momentum. We're crossing back above the moving average now. So this is turning the momentum for the NASDAQ 100 more positive. And we're above the 20-period moving average here, but we still have the 50-period. That's the red one. If this can continue to go up and cross above these lines, eventually see the blue line turn and go back above the red line, that would definitely turn things more positive. And we're still below this 23.6% extension here with the FIB chart for the Qs. And the small caps, they were down about half a percent, but they're still above their 50-day moving average. And here's the Russell 2000 small caps, also down 
The RSI is still below 50. We're below the 50-day moving average. The momentum continues to be negative. And we're neutral, though, with the Elder's Impulse system for the small caps. We look at the small caps to tech ratio. This continues to go down as tech has been outperforming lately. And we're still below the 50-day moving average with the mid caps. It would be more positive if we could close above that. We continue to be neutral with the Elder's Impulse system for the mid caps. We're coming right back up to the 50-day moving average with the Wilshire. This is another broad market measure that we look at. We want to be able to get above this. This would really help the overall market. And our total stock ETF, this is also coming back up to the 50-day moving average. So if we could climb above that, that would be more positive as well. And staples to tech ratio continues to fall as tech has been outperforming staples. And we're not up to the 50-day moving average yet with the FANG index. We did bounce off the 200-day moving average and have been having a nice little bounce here. But we want to be able to get above this to be more positive. And we're coming right up to this other trend line that I have here attaching these lows. So far, that may be acting as overhead resistance. And we're above the 50-day moving average and looking pretty solid here with the financial sector. The dollar is declining, but we're still in a longer-term uptrend. Apple was up a little bit, 0.2% above its 50-day moving average. We're crossing back above the 200-day moving average with Amazon. And we're still above the moving average here with Google, even though it did decline. And Facebook is looking pretty good these days, even though it was down a third of a percent. And we're bouncing off the 200-day moving average here with Microsoft. NVIDIA is coming back up to its 50-day moving average. And they're going to have earnings coming out pretty soon, which is what the market fixates on here and everybody starts talking about it. So we'll have to see if there's some kind of a setup for that as we get closer. And Tesla was down 3% and it's dropping down below its 200 day moving average. Netflix was up over 2% and above its 50 day moving average. And then here's another broad market measure. We haven't turned back positive here yet. This is a five period moving average of the highs minus the lows. We're still getting a negative result for now. And we're seeing a fairly strong correlated relationship short term and an improving relationship longer term between U.S. stocks and world stocks. We want to keep an eye on oil and it dropped. It's coming down more into the mid 70s now. We're still wondering if things are going to escalate in the Middle East, which could really impact oil. And we're dropping back down now with the 10 year yield. We're going up with the 10 year based on price. And we're seeing a little bit of an improvement here with the Qs to S&P, but we're still below a declining moving average. Not really improving with discretionary to the S&P, trying to get a little bit above the moving average when we look at large cap growth versus large cap value. So the large caps are looking better, but we're seeing a bit of a lag here with the mid caps, and we're a little bit above the moving average with the small caps. The S&P to utilities ratio is starting to go back up. That would be more positive for the S&P. This is going down, which is the staples to S&P ratio. When this is going down, that's more positive for the S&P. So what's our outlook for Thursday? We are in the process of turning positive. We, you could make a case for that in the short term and the long term. It's the intermediate term. We want to get further above that 50-day moving average. And this is probably the most reports we're going to get. That This is the most reports we will have for the entire week. We're going to get weekly jobless claims as well as continuing claims on Thursday. Retail sales, that's a biggie. Import and export prices, industrial production and capacity utilization, and business inventories will all be coming out, as well as the NAHB Housing Market Index. And then we want to watch just all the crazy stuff in case it does have an impact on the markets. And then Friday, we're going to get housing starts and building permits and consumer sentiment coming out. And then that's they don't really have it listed here. Thursday is kind of the big day, according to this economic calendar. We're positive, though. When we look at August 15th with the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ, it looks pretty good on a, on a seasonal basis here. We are dealing with options expiration week. So that can often make things a little crazy, specifically on Friday. And Thursday is not the most positive day, but it tends to be a more positive day based on how things were in 2023. And we see eh, not an awful lot of seasonality here, a little bit of a pickup here during an election year. But also be aware that Friday is options expiration. 
And we're trying to compare 1968 to right now, wondering if we're going to see a little bit of a bounce going forward from here. And when the current president is not running for re-election, we still tend to do fairly well anyway in the bigger picture. But it's September that seasonally tends to be quite weak, both when we look at this chart and the other chart. And then when you look at August through October, we tend to have negative returns during that whole period of time. But during an election year, which is what we're in right now, we tend to perform the best seasonally in the month of August. But also look at September, where we don't perform well no matter what's going on. So what are our warning signs? We're still keeping an eye on these defensive areas, staples, utilities, and healthcare, with energy kind of being, we don't know if that's defensive or not for right now. We're seeing a little bit of improvement with growth to value, not any improvement with discretionary to staples, but Overall, it'd be nice if we saw these improving more than they have been, especially growth of value. We're just not seeing much with discretionary to staples. The ease of movement is still negative, but improving after being extreme negative. And our oscillators, we're starting to turn up. We're looking more positive in the short and intermediate term, or we're still negative in the long term. And now our positive list is actually getting a lot longer. And I'm not quite sure about the equity put call 510 charts. I don't have those to update. But our smart money indicators, accumulation distribution, check and money flow, and the check and oscillator, they are actually on our positive list now. And our advanced decline lines continue to hold up, especially for the S&P. The S&P and NYSE McClellan oscillators and summation indexes are positive. And the Swindland Trading Oscillator is positive. The Parabolic SAR, a new addition to the positive side here. And we're seeing the bullish percent indexes for the S&P, NASDAQ 100, and NYSE, all looking positive now. And the Money Flow, as well as the Ultimate Oscillator, the Copic Curve, the Vortex is now turning back positive, And the financial sector continues to hold up rather well, as well as the Momentums, we're crossing back above the moving average with the NASDAQ 100. So our conclusion, we are in the process, at least from what it looks like right now, of turning back positive. Now, in the short term, you could make a case that we are already positive. We're in the intermediate term. We're in the process of turning positive, or we continue to be positive in the long term. Thank you. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you have a really good day. I will talk to you in the next video.